must be hella. Four, son of Odin. Really? You don't look like him. Perhaps we can come to an arrangement. You sound like him. Neil. Before your queen. All the other movies took a knee to Thor Ragnarok. Great ratings from the critics. It took in a whopping $120 million over the weekend. We'll discuss if you need to see it right now. What's good, life gainers and YouTube? Oh, knowing I love it, feeling I'm seeing all powerful. Just damn all everything. Sexy as hell host of the Life Gains channel. Bringing you guys another stream it or beam it. Is the movie good enough for you to go spend that money in the theater? And with Thor Ragnarok, it is a resounding yes. Everybody's been using the term fun when they describe this movie. And I'll say it's fun. I want you to think back to if you grew up an 80s baby, to the way you felt when your Sunday or Saturday morning cartoons would come on. That made you have a certain feeling because of the music, the action, insurmountable evil, great superheroes. This movie had it all. However, it is not the best Marvel movie done. It's probably the top five. I'll definitely say it's a top five. By far, it is the best Thor movie. Now, let's kind of talk about some of the things that happened. Kate Blanchett playing Hela, the villain, has been the best villain that they have put on the big screen. She was evil, but she was that weird, gothic, sexy as hell thing going on. My wife know I like those little weird, gothic, sexy as hell girls. And Kate Blanchett was that. If you think Loki was evil, Kate Blanchett was evil, and she was killing people left and right. Hands down, the two characters that stole the show was Kate Blanchett and Tessa Thompson, who played Valkyrie in this movie. She did an outstanding job. Now, the one thing that they've done with this movie that they've always done is they tried to add humor. And they've done a very, very good job of adding humor to a dark story plot. However, there were times when I felt like they stretched on the humor. And let me give you one example. Thor, he's the damn god of thunder. It's okay to see him throw a joke in there every now and then, which they did. But sometimes they tried just a little too hard to make him funny in times where he shouldn't have, he should have been more of a menacing force. And I'm not going to spoil the whole thing for you, but you'll see there are a couple of times when you wanted him to be, I'm the god of thunder and I'm not the god of telling jokes. But when he did tell jokes, he did a good job with his jokes. So I'll give it to him. He was pretty funny. Also in this movie, Hulk, he started talking all of a sudden, like fifth grade baby talk. And that's cool. I would have liked for them to have kind of told us how did Hulk start talking? Was there something on a planet that made him talk? Maybe get a little bit more into how Hulk got stuck on the planet. But, you know, I won't dwell on that. My biggest knock with Hulk was they watered him down. They, I mean, they didn't make him the powerful, menacing monster that a lot of us comic book fans want to see. And this storyline stuck pretty much to the Ragnarok allure from the comic books that a lot, of, a lot of you guys are used to. For those of you that don't read the comics, you won't understand that part, but you'll get it when you see the movie. And it was just generally a very good time. And Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie on screen with Thor was the best female character to aid Thor's side. You know, I'm not knocking Natalie Portman and her role with Thor or Lady Sif, but Tessa Thompson knocked Valkyrie out the part. You know, she had a, a dark background connected to Hela and the things that happened to the Valkyrie predating Thor. And so I don't want to give away the whole story, but if you're used to Hela being Loki's daughter, it's not like that in this story. In this story, she is Thor and Loki's sister. She came before Thor and Loki, and they'll give you that outstanding background during the movie. Um, you also had Jeff Goldblum in this movie, and he did a pretty good job, but you know, what do you expect from Jeff Goldblum? He's going to do his thing. He played a very eccentric, weird grandmaster 
who is also a celestial for those of you that follow the comics pretty heavy and he did his part you also had cord in this movie so if you guys have ever seen or ever watched or read the Hulk World War Hulk story cord was one of the gladiators in the form with Hulk and you know he had a voice that was kind of like meager but he was a fighter and he kind of stole the show as well whenever you see him on the big screen so overall even though I'm very biased because I am a Marvel fanboy, I'm definitely going to rate this movie, um, you know, nine out of 10 on the life game streaming the beam it scale, meaning that under all circumstances, you should go see this movie in the theater, experience it with the sound, experience the whole theater atmosphere and enjoy it. And don't wait for the stream on this one. Go see it in theater. It is definitely worth the money. And in all cases, I think Marvel is headed in a great direction with Thor because Thor was probably the most sucky part of the Marvel movies that they've done. Well, not anymore. This one takes the cake. And if I had to rank them, I would rank them uh, Avengers, the first one, Captain America, Civil War, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Iron Man, and Thor Ragnarok would round out my top five. Must go see and you're probably going to want to see it again when they drop the stream it version later on in the year. And that's going to do it for this video. Don't you forget to like my video, comment, and subscribe. Did I say how hot and steamy Tessa Thompson and Kate Blanchett looked in this movie? Oh yeah, they bought that life. Be sure to check my video description below this video. Check out my past videos. Check out my affiliates. Do business with them. Do business with me. And until the next sexy as hell video, go catch this theater beam, Thor Ragnarok. <laughs>